This is a show about the ferocious pursuit of incremental growth from the inside out. And it's also a show about whatever else I feel like talking about, no matter how random, irrelevant, or confusing the subject might be. You are listening to the Emotionally Excellent Man Show, and I'm your host, Jason McKenzie. All right, before we saddle up, I want to tell you about the Dad Edge Alliance, which is my absolute favorite community on the whole entire internet. It's a group of, at the time of this, my recording, it's about 250 guys. It's growing all the time, <clears throat> but it is a community unlike anything I've ever seen. And I don't know if you could hear that thunder that just happened, but that is a sign that what I'm saying is truly, truly important. That's right. Thunder. Thunder happened when I'm talking about the Dad Edge Alliance. So listen, if you're a guy and you are feeling like your friendships or your relationships are superficial, you get around, you shoot the shit, but you're never going deeper. <clears throat> you don't feel safe to do that. Um, and you know that there's something more. I'm telling you, join this community. It is insanely life-changing, okay? Like we got guys in there from all walks of life, and but they all have one thing in common. They're trying to elevate fatherhood by improving themselves. They're leaning in. They're supporting each other. They're learning from one another. They're learning about themselves. They're challenging themselves. They're setting goals. They're holding each other accountable, but they are all doing it in a place that's totally safe and totally just overflowing with bro love. And I'm trying to say that in a manly way, bro love, right? So, you know, one of the things that I've learned throughout my own personal development journey, which is a journey that will last the rest of my life, obviously, is that the people you surround yourself with are that like, that's one of the most important choices you can make. Many of you have probably heard the quote, you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And when I first heard that, like logically, I got it like, okay, that makes sense. But I never could have imagined what it actually meant, how transformative it is to get a better, higher caliber, more open, loving, caring, relentless group of men in your life. So that's what this fucking community provides. I mean, I can't, I don't know how to state it in a way that really truly conveys how I feel about it. Like, maybe I'll just say fuck a lot more. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, the stuff that goes on here is crazy. It's, they've got community calls. They've got, you know, accountability teams. They've got amazing content, free books. We're building courses. Um, we have experts come in, New York Times bestselling authors, Navy SEALs to speak to the guys. And the guys are learning and they're growing and they're building relationships with one another and they're bringing a better version of themselves into every, into every aspect of their life. So please uh, think about it. Look around you. Do you have the group of people around you that are going to help you create the fucking life you want? Most people don't. Most people don't even know there's an alternative and most people don't even understand how important it is. So I'm telling you from my own personal experience and witnessing hundreds of people have the same experience. It changes everything. Okay, so listen, if you want to know more, you can either always send me a message or you can go to gooddadproject.com slash alliance and I'll keep the, I'll put that link in the show notes page. Do it and it will help you become emotionally fucking excellent. Now onto the show. Well, I'm sitting here on a rainy Sunday morning with a tea in hand, reflecting on something that's happened over the past few days. <clears throat> Sorry, I've got morning cough, morning uh, sexy voice, or really just a scratchy throat is actually probably a better way to put it. So I've had this thing, so it's this has been going on for a while, and I want to explain it to you, and it's been a really interesting journey. So uh, maybe I'll just cut to the chase. So about later last year, I think around November of 2017, uh, I had uh, somebody reach out to me, a good friend of mine, a person who had been a good friend for really 20 years of my life. And then uh, through a falling out in like 2010, he basically wrote me off. And so we hadn't talked since then. And then um, he reached out through a friend and yeah, anyways, was in a terrible state. I mean, just life had totally not turned out the way he wanted. And you know, uh, broken up with his girlfriend, this woman of his dreams, and he was just in a really shitty spot. And um, 
without going into all the detail, because it doesn't really matter, over the last, say, six, seven months, you know, we've talked on and off, and I've always tried to, like, really tried to listen to him and really validated him and really tried to encourage him to change. And he's always been, you know, he's one of these people who is has a real poor me attitude. Like, life happens to me. I can't even imagine why things aren't going the way I want, everything is shit, I hate my fucking life, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, to me, as an objective third party, who, probably an objective th- third party, who's got some experience in, you know, helping men who are ready to change go through this kind of thing, um, you know, it's fucking obvious to me what, why, why his choices are creating exactly what he says he doesn't want. You know, it's harder for him to see it, obviously. Um and plus, he's got nobody to talk to about it. So, I mean, really, most of the shit stays in the echo chamber of his own head, which is never a fucking good idea, ever. Um, and so, I have grown weary, let's say, of this same cycle. Because I think 90% of the conversations that we've had are in some way related to him and how shitty his fucking life is and how it's impossible to change and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. And, you know, like he, he never asked me how I'm doing. Not, not that I, I don't want to sound whiny about that, but I mean like a mutual friendship is one where you, you know, you talk about your, each other's lives. And so, but what I find interesting is that I know the guy is not in a place to hear the change talk that I want to tell him. I know that. Like, logically, I know that. But I keep fucking doing it. And so, and I I know I'm not being effective. Like, I get it. And, but so, and I'm, but I'm of two, maybe more, even more than two minds about it. I mean, part of me thinks that, yes, I validated the fuck out of this guy. I get it. I do feel how his pain, like, honestly, I really do. Like I, I can, I know what it's like to be powerless, you know, to feel like you're powerless or to, to be living a life of learned helplessness. Like, fuck man. I, in a lot of ways I did that for a, you know, a decent period of my life. And so I can totally relate to what that feeling feels like. Um, and on the other hand, and, and so I know he's not ready to change. Like I know what it was like for me when he's not ready to change, when I wasn't ready to change. But on the other hand, <clears throat> I also know that nobody's going to fucking tell him the shit in a way that I can tell it to him. Although now that I'm saying that out loud, that just sounds like an ego thing. Cause the way I'm telling it to him is not fucking effective anyways, but I feel almost a responsibility to try to find some different ways to tell him what I see to be the truth. And I've tried like being very gentle about it for a long time. And quite frankly, I'm fucking done. I am so done with it. Like it's so tired and pathetic and I just, I'm not interested anymore. You know, we haven't been friends for a long time. I feel like I've given it the, you know, the old college tried to the best of my ability. So earlier this week, so this guy, let me just give some background. What this guy does is, you know, He's a very emotionally child. He's 46 years old. He's a a very emotionally childish person. You know, he's clingy and insecure and like he's got a lot of characteristics that would never like make him unappealing in a relationship with with a female. Like obviously no healthy, well-adjusted female wants to be in a relationship with a man child like this, right? So, you know, so his relationships never work out. And then he tries for his whole life. He's tried to comfort himself. Uh, you know, by buying expensive shit and then getting into fucking financial trouble. And he always does that. And that never works. And so, you know, it's just a repeating pattern. And then of, of doing the same shit over and over again, and just like literally pretending he's got no idea why things don't turn out the way he wants. And I shouldn't laugh. It's not funny at all. It's, it's very sad, actually. And so just last week, it's hard to I want to give as much context as possible without giving too many details because it doesn't really matter. But anyways, bought this house, fucking disaster. You know, he bought it to be with this girl that was obviously not that into him, but he was so desperate he couldn't see it. Anyways, then he just found out that he's got like a huge water problem. Like he's trying to sell this house. Now he's going to have to put a shitload of money into it. It's just one more thing, one more piece of evidence to him that he, Fucking nothing ever goes his way. And so he sends me this email 
or text the other day and he goes, I hate, you know, blah, blah, blah. I hate my fucking fucking life, fucking shit, blah. And I've asked him if he, he's not suicidal. I mean, I've asked him this a number of times. He's not suicidal, but you know, and I finally was like, okay, dude, I'm fucking done. Like, shut the fuck up. Okay. Yeah. You know, the water problem. So I, what, what set, I think what set me off was when I said, well, do you have any ideas on what different choices you might be able to make in order to start changing your situation? And he goes, nope. And I was like, okay. And I, I think I reacted that way because that's demonstrably false because I fucking, we've talked about it for hours and hours and hours. And what a waste of time that was if you have taken nothing away from that whatsoever. That's, that's what I felt like. And so I just fucking sent him this long ass text and basically told him to get his fucking shit together. You know, you keep doing the same shit over and over and over again. You keep expecting a different result. You've invested no time in yourself. You are, you know, and, you know, it was pretty direct, let's say. And I said, you only know how to be a victim, man. You, you're 46 years old and you only know how to be a victim. And if like you've got, if you want to change, which is obviously your fucking choice, but if you want to change, you're going to have to make different choices. And, but right now you're just a fucking victim. And so this is how he took that. And I said, I know you're going to get all offended by this and whatever, and probably write me off and never talk to me again. And I get that's how you roll, man. No, nah, but you know what? You need to hear it anyways. I think you need to hear it. I'm not hundred percent sure he needed to hear it, but that's what I said at the time. And that's how I felt in that moment. Cause I was kind of pissed. And even though I knew what I was doing was not effective. I, and so I'll get to that in a minute. And then, so the next day he's like, my house is going to cost 20 to $50,000 to fix. And then he goes, thanks for picking me apart yesterday, Jay. Like, and I'm like, there you go again, man. You're just, you're, you're being a fucking victim again. So instead of looking at this, yeah, it sucks that you've got to put that money in your house. You know what? We had to put 20 grand in our basement too. It fucking hurt. You know, we had to put a new roof on our house. Like, I mean, it's the fucking cost of home ownership and it sucks sometimes. But, um, but I said, there you go again, you're being the fucking victim. So instead of looking at the substance of what I have to say, all you do is you feel attacked and you use, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And just, you know what, dude, if you want ever want to change, I would love to help you. I've changed my own life. I fucking been where you are or, you know, in some relatively close to where you are. You don't ever want to change. I'm here. But if you want to keep fucking being the victim and just bitching about how shitty your life is, fuck off and find, I'd say that, but I mean, that's what I was feeling, but find somebody else to do that, man. And so I'm sure that like, and what I also said to him is typically what you do in a situation like this is when somebody says something you don't like, you get hurt and defensive, and then you write that person off for the rest of your life. That Those choices clearly don't seem to be working out for you. So you can go ahead and do that to me right now if you want to. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. Um, but think about it, because it doesn't really produce the end result that you're looking for. So anyways, but the point of all that was, why do I keep doing that? So I, I hope, I, I suspect I framed it in a way where he's not going to right, you know, uh, get back to me again. But and anyways, as I'm riding my, I went for a unicycle ride on Friday night. And as I was thinking about this, cause I do some great thinking there, I'm like, you know, I wonder if I can't seem to, and I don't want to say I can't help myself because obviously that I'm not, I can't help myself. I'm making a choice to get engaged in this way that drives me crazy. So, but I guess the question is why, right? And so, and I wonder, I, I as I was riding my unicycle, I'm like, I feel like Maybe in, when I'm, you know, quote, yelling at him, I wonder if I'm yelling at myself. You know, I wonder if I'm being so forceful about it because I'm re- trying to remind myself as passionately as possible never to fucking go back to that place. And then I started thinking that, that what does that mean? Does that mean that I am running away from the past as much or, you know, in some way versus like maybe even as much as running towards where I want to go in the future. And what does that even mean? Like, is that even a bad thing? Like how much does it matter if I am driving, like making choices based on where I do, you know, that I'm making choices to prevent myself from going back to where I was versus making choices that get me, you know, setting a clear direction and, and, making choices that will move me towards that, you know? 
and I'm obviously doing that. I mean, I do that a lot in my life, but I feel like that there must be the, the idea of running from something. If that's true, I feel like that must be holding me back in some way. And I'm just thinking of, I'm not really a hundred percent sure how to think about it. Like, because if I'm doing something that I know is not effective, like, so in talking to this, to this, this guy, I'm doing it and I know it's not effective. I'm fully self-aware of that. And yet I'm doing it anyways. So, which tells me that there's something important there. Like I'm being triggered in some way. I don't want to say triggered. It's such a fucking buzzword, but not, you know what I mean? And, and I'm not really a hundred percent sure how to think about all this. And I never really thought about it this way before. And so what I also realized is, you know, and, and this, this is not a good or bad thing. It's just something I think that is present in all of us. But when I got back to, from doing that dad edge summit in, in June, I felt like I was on top of the world for like three days, <laughs> you know, and then maybe not even three days, maybe like one, but you know, and then I, it's like, I've, I feel like I've peeled back a whole nother layer of the onion and there's a whole bunch of shit in there that I still got to work out. I think, I wonder if that ever stops happening and I'm not complaining about it. It's, it's actually quite fun. Like this conversation is annoying as this whole situation kind of is. It's really fun and interesting for me to try to figure out why the fuck am I doing this? Like, why do I keep doing this shit with this guy? Hopefully it doesn't happen again, but I suspect if he writes me back again, I'm going to fucking write him back again or maybe talk to him on the phone. If that ever happens, it, there's a good chance that it won't. But if it does, so I guess, I guess really the fundamental question that I'm wrestling is with is how, why does it, how much does it matter if I'm running away from something versus towards something? Like, is there any healthiness in using the past as a driving force to propel you forward? Like, but, or is there like some kind of, is there downsides, there's probably pros and there's probably cons of, of looking in the rear view mirror. And I don't spend all my time looking in the rear view mirror, but what this caused me to realize is that I wonder if I spend more time looking in the rear view mirror than I thought. And I think that I do. And I'm, I'm not, I'm still trying to figure out how to think about all that. I've said that like three times. Um, and so I guess that's it. It's, I I, I really feel like there's probably significant benefit for me to shift the ratio. Like I think I spend more time, much more time looking forward, looking ahead, but I feel like there's probably some kind of increased benefit of improving that ratio of looking forward versus looking backwards. And, but I don't really know why. And that's the thing that's uh, got me uh, perplexed right now. So man, anybody have, if anybody has any insight or anybody's experienced something like this. I suspect that most of us have experienced something like this, but man, I would love to talk about it because I find this whole subject quite fascinating. And it kind of hit me like a uh, flash in the pan, I think is the expression, when I was on my unicycle the other night. So that's this little uh, microdose monologue ramble. And uh, I hope everybody has a great fucking day. Thanks for listening to the Emotionally Excellent Man Show. Now, go own your shit like the powerful, handsome boss man that you are.